These materials will be used to make a sculpture after the clay has been prepared and mixed by the expert hands of Arkady Blasco, one of the most representative contemporary artists in Mediterranean ceramics. We're going to make a piece like this, a truncated cone with a spiral staircase around it. This is a scale model, of course. We are going to do a half-size model, that means three and a half meters instead of the full size of approximately seven meters. It is a homage to Tatlin, to his famous monument to the International, presented in Moscow in 1920. Basically, it is the story of a tower promoting dialogue so that people can come to agreements. The piece will be built around this structure, using refractory plaques placed around the axis. Each line we can see on the sketch is one row, just like when we build a building. Between each row, a plywood piece will be inserted to spread the weight out evenly. The piece is going to weigh 2,000 kilos, so we need to balance the weight out over the entire surface. Then we have to level each plane with the help of a spirit level and then build the pieces up one by one. They have special marks on their outer surfaces, so we have to number each piece on each level. Each step has its own number up to the top. In his studio in Muchamiel, in the province of Alicante, Spain, Arcadi Blasco is constructing a scale model, half the size of the subsequent large-scale work. The way he works and creates reflects the many historic stages of ceramics manufacturing in the region of Valencia, which has made some unique contributions to the history of art, such as Iberian ceramics and, in some respects, the Mudejar or Moorish architecture.
formación es de pintor, evidentemente. Yo estudié I was arte, trained as a painter. I studied fine arts at the San Fernando School of Madrid and finished at the San Carlos School in Valencia, where I had to do my military service at that time. Later, I went to Rome thanks to a scholarship from the Academy of Spain in Rome, and it was there that I met Nino Caruso, a very prestigious ceramist who gave me my first vision of ceramics as something distinct from traditional ceramics manufacturing, the way I studied ceramics in my textbooks. When I returned to Spain, I got involved in the popular ceramics trade in pottery. I became acquainted with Pedro Mercedes in Cuenca through a series of coincidences and I simply got trapped. The firing, the kilns, the clay. I worked with him all summer and then I started hunting down other potters. I worked in Cuenca, then in the Triana district of Seville with popular Triana potters. Then here in Alicante, in the villages of Agost, in Coca, Segovia, in Ubeda, in Colmenar de Oreja, with the giant earthenware vase makers, making giant vases and seeing how they worked with clay and how they handled those enormous one to two yard high pieces. That was part of my training as a ceramist, but I still don't consider myself as a ceramist, but as a painter who works with ceramics, which is different. I think my painter's eye is part of the way I work with ceramics. If this has contributed anything special, it is a feeling of freedom I have when I use and handle clay, fire, slips and glaze, using the vision of a painter more than the vision of a ceramist. Ceramics is probably one of the oldest arts pursued by man. The first man-made objects were containers, vases for holding wheat or water. They had a utilitarian purpose, but ceramics were also used in magical ceremonies for burying the ashes of the dead in ritual burials. 
They were very primitive ceramics with no ornamentation. I even had the good fortune to find primitive Neolithic settlements around my studio here. In fact, my sons found them when we were out walking. They were simple objects with no patterns at all, very simple vases for holding liquids. Ceramic wares made by primitive peoples show a remarkable sense of proportion and beauty, contrasting sharply with tools and utensils which were seemingly of simpler craftsmanship. The region of Valencia contains what is thought to be Europe's most important Neolithic ceramic site, with pieces dating back 8,000 years. Ceramics continued to develop in this area of the ancient world, known once upon a time as Melania Contestania, where wave after wave of influences came from the East, the Phoenicians, the Greeks, the Romans. But there was an indigenous culture known as the Iberians, the people who sculpted the famous Dama de Elche found at the Lalcudia archaeological site near here, together with ceramic shards showing complex decorations, highly developed, almost Baroque in style. These had a great influence on my work, just like all the cultural influences from the Mediterranean, which have reached these shores from time to time. Jumping forward in time, we might mention the golden age of ceramics, when ceramists worked hand in hand with architects to create what is known as mudéjar architecture. This is probably the most important contribution to the architecture of the Iberian Peninsula. There are many examples of this art still standing, like the towers of Teruel and many others, especially in Teruel. This architecture seems to have no weight. It is only light and color, showing a special understanding between ceramists and architects, which no other part of Europe has ever seen, only the Iberian Peninsula. Walls seem to be suspended in mid-air, like rich oriental carpets or tapestries, utterly unlike Gothic or Romanesque architecture, which was heavy and earthy. The popular mudeja style was colorful, weightless, floating in the air.
Well, we're going to open the kiln. A wood kiln I built myself a long time ago. We're going to see what has happened during firing, because you never know for sure what you'll get. You know what you put in, but never what you actually get out. We'll see. This firing was done with three types of wood, pine, poplar and eucalyptus. Mostly pine though, because it gives a lot of heat, which is what you need in an inverted kiln. A catenary kiln, it's called, because the heat goes up, then down, then up again. And when the flames lick out of the chimney, that's when the heat has reached exactly 1,235 degrees, marking the end of the firing, which is when we stop up the outlets and achieve a sharp reduction. So, let's see what we have here. Ceramics opened up possibilities for me which were different from traditional painting, or at least that's what I thought. I used oil paints, caustics, gouache, watercolors and mixed media, the normal things in painting. But ceramics gave me first the mystery of firing, the kiln, fire, transformation of materials with the help of heat and high temperatures. It gave me different textures, more attractive, more mysterious things than oil paints or traditional painting could provide. It gave me all the other things related to the handling of clay, mixing earth together. I use slips and glazes only occasionally. What attracted me was the use of raw materials, clays, different compositions, inventing new materials, a different material, materials that provided their own strength, color, texture, bringing new discoveries to my research into the arts in the widest possible sense, including both painting and sculpture. All this led me deeper and deeper into the field of ceramics. This is what really attracted me to ceramics, what trapped me in this passionate, mysterious world full of possibilities that were much broader than anything I could imagine in the field of painting. 